Congressman, you talked a little bit about sort of the fractured nature of the quest to preserve unborn lives. Talk a little bit about what the legislative messaging should be at the federal level on the issue of abortion. I think it should be a multi-pronged approach. Number one, we need to show compassion on the issue for uh, mothers who find themselves in difficult situations, who feel like they have no hope or have no options. Uh, we ought to be working hard to train, change uh, hearts and minds. You know, it's encouraging that the younger generation is more pro-life. Uh, that's a, a new phenomena. You, all you have to do is uh, attend the, uh, the pro-life marches, and you see how many high school and college students are there. And that's so encouraging, so refreshing to see. And I think it's because they have seen the ultrasounds of their siblings who look like, you know, Uncle So-and-so or aunts. I mean, just the, the descriptive visual nature that you can see that wasn't the case when my kids were little. But... Uh, we also want to support crisis pregnancy centers. My wife and I have supported our local crisis pregnancy center financially and otherwise for years who come alongside mothers uh, who come and see them who, uh, again, feel like they have no hope and no options, and they support those mothers irrespective of their decision on life, by the way, uh, support them pre-birth, through the birth process, and hopefully, obviously, afterwards as they need help taking care of that little one post-birth. And, but at the same time, we also need to be unashamed about the fact that as a Congress, as legislators, we ought to stand unashamedly, unapologetically pro-life uh, and, and, and try to fight to save every life. You think about the impact of the decision that was finally overturned. The only decision in the history of the country that cost 63 million lives, the, the, the Roe v. Wade decision. So we have now 63 million people who are not in our country to die because of that decision. The average age of those individuals, this 50-year-old decision, would be about 25 years old. The oldest would be about 50 years old. We have about 35 million people who are not participating in our economy, by the way, that can't be hired, that can't account for productivity, that can't pay into Social Security. And we all know individuals around us who, uh, who, were, who were born in difficult circumstances, difficult life situations, who are so grateful that their mother chose life. And we don't... Have you ever met anyone who said, gosh, I wish my mother had not chosen? Mm -hmm. We also all know individuals, uh, who, mothers who had pregnancies that they were told there's going to just be a, just a really serious situation where they should abort that child, and then that child was born perfectly healthy. Now, I don't believe we ought to put that value on life based on our standard of, you know, what kind of a life, quality of life thing we're going to have, but we've seen those situations where the medical practitioners were wrong on how they predicted that that child was going to be deformed in some way or disadvantaged in some way, and they came out perfectly healthy. Again, I still don't think that would be a justification for putting that on the mother. Uh, Ronald Reagan famously said, everybody who's against, everybody who's for abortion has already been born. And, uh, that, and that, that's certainly an, an obvious truth to it. But legislators have a role to play. Uh, we need to stand up unashamedly, un unapologetically pro-life. Moderation, moderation inspires no one. Moderation means lack of inspiration. Moderation means lack of turnout. Moderation means you lose elections. And even if everyone is not with uh, you, if you're a pro-life legislator as I am, on every issue, including on the life issue, very few people go to the polls and vote just so they can have abortion up to the moment of birth at taxpayer expense anytime for any reason. And frankly, those votes are not in play anyway. And, but people will respect you if you have integrity and you're truthful and you don't tell one audience one thing and tell another audience another thing. And again, if we're going to stand up for anything, it ought to be the issue of life. There was a time when slavery was legal in this country. And I don't know what the polls showed 150 years ago, but thank God we didn't surrender on an issue that was, that was the stain of the 17 and the 1800s, the way that abortion has been in the 1900s and the 2000s here. And so at the state level and the federal level, we need to redouble our efforts, be more effective in messaging, but be bold on the issue with humility and compassion at the same time.